previous video, I had told you that I'm going to make a series about how I made my equatorial platform. Today's video is about what are the initial data collection you need to do before you start designing your equatorial platform. Unlike the equatorial mount, which has an adjustment for the latitude, basically the elevation of the Polaris. The equatorial mount has to be designed for a specific latitude. And first step towards designing your equatorial mount is to know where exactly in which latitude you want to use it. Now, if you are in the northern hemisphere like I am, and if you face towards north, towards the Polaris, your east being on the right and west being on the left, you would see the stars rotating anticlockwise. So in today's video, we are going to first learn about what are the different types of equatorial platform and equatorial mounts available for different forms of telescope and in which exact category the equatorial platform falls in and then we will deep dive what are the different parameters you need to collect before you begin designing your own platform. Now I tried to classify all the different type of mounts for uh, the telescope and uh, note that this is a broad uh, level classification. There are many other parameters such as single or dual axis whether it has or hasn't uh, encoders. So I didn't went into that level of granularity. In today's video, we are going to focus on flat base and VNS type of equatorial platform. Talking of the north bearing, now for flat base type of mounts, which is a mix and improvement of Ponset and Gi type of bearings to support the north segment bearing. A sub-variant called conical bearing uh, type also exists, which is slightly very difficult to manufacture. If you don't have an access to a tilting type of grinder, I would not recommend going and choosing for a conical type of bearing. Another type which is very popular is called VNS vertical north segment it is very popular because of its compact size and its ability to have horizontal bearings and drive mechanism the concept number two can also have an horizontal drive mechanism but number one which was the case uh, for me usually has a very complex drive mechanism however if you do not have access to cnc milling machine making a vns segments can be challenging so let's focus on type 1. Now coming to the south bearing, there can be two types. One is the replica of the north type bearing but adapted to the conical segment of that particular plane, usually much smaller in diameter. The second type is similar to the RA axis bearing of equatorial mounts. Some pros and cons of the respective designs. Now this is the configuration I went for that I had chosen mainly based on the type of manufacturing processes available near me at that time. A recap of the questions you need to ask yourself, please go through them. the key parameter is to measure the center of gravity of your telescope and we will be doing that by the moment method. There are plenty of videos on YouTube explaining this method but here is a small animation. So basically you try to roll over the object for which you are trying to find the center of gravity over a pipe till the time when it just topples over to the other side. You do the same from both the directions. Mark the location on which it just topples over to the other side and then mark the center point. That is the plane of your center of gravity. Now here are my measurements and calculations for the center of gravity. Notice the difference in the actual weight from the catalog weight. Now one assumption over here for the tube is that the center of gravity lies exactly at the center point and the variations in it because of the mounting of cameras or different eyepieces, barlows is not taken into consideration. Now here I have marked the center of gravity of my telescope using a small red dot. You can see how it is deviated from the rotation axis. Having 
having the center of gravity on the axis is preferable because then you can drive the whole equatorial platform with a very low capacity motor which is crucial in case you are using friction drive now that brings me to my first problem designing this equatorial platform for 24 degree north latitude and then using it at even lower 12 degree north latitude now a solution to this problem is to lower the center of gravity by adding weight however in my case the center of gravity was way above and I had to use almost around a magnitude of 30 to 35 kgs of dead weight to lower the center of gravity at 12 degree axis which is absolutely insane and this is why I suggest that you do not design your equatorial platform for usage more than plus minus 5 degree latitude. Another reason for restricting your latitude of usage is with the increase in the delta of latitude you are actually increasing the risk of your telescope toppling over at the extremities of the usage and that is well evident using the pictures of my usage at 12 degree north. Now due to this issue, this uh, equatorial platform is not very user friendly at my present latitude and that's why I'm planning to make another one specific to 12.9 degree north. So that's it uh, for this video. Um, I hope uh, you would start by collecting this data and in the next episode, we will talk about how to start designing the equatorial platform. If you are familiar with some of the 3D CAD platform like uh, Onshape or Autodesk Inventor or, or any other, there, there are plenty of them. If you, if you know them, there, there are some freewares uh, available as well, then you can use them. Please hit that subscribe button if you are not a subscriber to my channel and if you are interested to follow the series with the upcoming episodes. Like, share, and comment. See you later. Bye.